Let's look at some uh, review questions from Chapter 5 on the Earth and its Moon. Here's question number one. The Moon's internal structure is similar to Earth's, but the Moon lacks. Well, the Moon uh, doesn't have an atmosphere, so A is definitely correct. Uh, the Moon just doesn't have the gravity to hold the atmosphere in. Uh, it doesn't have a hydrosphere. It doesn't have a water layer like the Earth does. Um, very few places do. Um, it doesn't have a magnetosphere. Um, it doesn't have a magnetic field to protect itself, so it lacks all of the above. And that's one reason why the Earth is more habitable than the, uh, the Moon. Question two. The principal greenhouse gases in our present atmosphere are Greenhouse gases are those gases that absorb infrared radiation and help warm up the atmosphere. Definitely carbon dioxide is in that. And uh, the other one, the other key one is water vapor. So water vapor and carbon dioxide absorb infrared radiation, the long wavelength radiation. And that allows to our atmosphere to be warmer, which is very good. Without the greenhouse effect in our atmosphere, A, we would not have to worry about ecological problems. Um, we probably still would have to worry about ecological problems. Um, B, the Earth's oceans would be frozen. Yes. Without the greenhouse effect, the Earth would not be warm enough to have liquid water. And liquid water is key to life as we know it. Uh, it may not be key elsewhere, but it's key to life as we know it. So we are very fortunate to have the just enough warmth to maintain our temperatures within this range where water is in its liquid state. And hence, uh, that's a very important thing. Question four. The region around Earth where the magnetic field traps charged particles is the well, one consequence of the Earth's magnetic field is the aurora borealis, the northern lights, and also the Van Allen radiation belts where charged particles get trapped in these areas. It's not necessarily a good thing. It's just a consequence of the good thing, which would be the Earth's magnetic field to begin with. So the Earth traps these particles and these Van Allen radiation belts. Question number five, at what lunar phase would the variation between high and low tides be greatest? Well, the tidal effect is greatest when the moon and the sun work together. So either if the moon and the sun are on the same line as a full moon, or if the moon and the sun are on the same line as in a new moon. They both are working together in either case in order to pull the uh, water of the earth uh, to one side. So uh, a new moon is definitely correct. A full moon is correct. But most correct would be both a new moon and a full moon, where they both work together. Question six. What force riveted the moon's near side to constantly face the Earth? Well, we just saw that the uh, moon's tidal effect on the Earth is, to, is our tides, as it's pulling the water to one side. The Earth's tidal effect, uh, the main effect on the moon is that it always is showing the same face towards us. So it's the Earth's tidal force that has pulled the Earth, the moon's face, to always face towards us. And so the answer here would be C. Just as the moon creates tides on Earth, the Earth affects the moon too. Question seven. Lunar maria are found. A, uniformly all over the moon. Well, you know, they are found on the far side, but very few. It's mostly on the near side facing the Earth uh, due to the Earth's pull tidal effect on the inner part of the moon, the denser part of the moon at one time was able to be pulled out on the near side facing the Earth. So that would be answer B. Question number eight, a planetary atmosphere with ozone could protect surface dwellers from, 
Ozone has the effect of absorbing UV radiation, ultraviolet radiation, and protect the uh, dwellers from that high energy uh, electromagnetic radiation. So uh, that's what it protects us from, and it's a good thing. So that is a ultraviolet radiation. Question number nine. Which of these is not a result of the Earth's magnetic field? Earth has a magnetic field due to the swirling molten matter in its outer core. Uh, allows us by the dynamo effect to have this um, relatively significant magnetic magnetic field for a terrestrial planet. That causes a compass to point north, so that is a definite result. It also gives us the auroras, the uh, northern lights and the southern lights. Um, it results in the Van Allen radiation belts, the trapped particle areas within the Earth's magnetic field. It creates a comet-like tail of charged particles that extends past our moon, so the only thing it doesn't do is volcanic eruptions. So that is not a result of the Earth's magnetic field. Question number 10. Today, which of these theories best explains the moon's origin? The fission theory was that the uh, moon just kind of fused or, or fissioned out of the Earth. The Earth had formed and then like a, like a, uh, out of Adam's rib, it's like the moon came out of the Earth. Uh, that sort of has been, been, been negated by the fact that the uh, moon would have too much spin, too much angular momentum, and it, it doesn't have that. Um, B, the uh, giant impact theory is the collision of a Mars-like object resulting in the formation of the moon at some distance from the Earth, mostly a mantle material, and within the ecliptic plane, and that seems to be what has happened. Uh, the capture theory, the Earth doesn't have enough gravity to, to really capture something as big as the moon. The co-formation theory would uh, suggest that the uh, material of the moon would be around the Earth's equator, and it's not. It's in near the ecliptic plane. And the fusion theory, I don't know what that theory is, the fusion theory. So the only uh, theory, the best theory uh, as of today is the giant impact theory. That is the end of this short uh, quiz on Chapter 5. should give you an indication of how well you are prepared uh, for this chapter.